You're listening to the Apple Papers Radio Plays, brought to you by Manx National Heritage, a charity responsible for the Isle of Man's natural and cultural heritage. These short plays are based upon stories discovered within the papers of the Dukes of Athol, which are currently being catalogued at the Manx Museum, and cover the Athol's administration of the Isle of Man between 1736 and 1830. The second Duke of Athol and the third Duke and Duchess were the final Lords of Man prior to the revestment of 1765, when governance of the Isle was vested into the British Crown. But the Athols would continue to play a significant role here on the island after this historic event, with the fourth Duke becoming the Governor of the Isle in 1793 and remaining so until his death in 1830. The Athol papers contain a wealth of information on all aspects of Lanx life in this period, ranging from the governance of the island down to the day-to-day -day activities of its people. Given the Isle of Man's geographical location and its connection to the Dukes of Athol, there are also plenty of records relating to the socio-economic and political trends and issues of the era found in the rest of the British Isles. The plays, which are all set during the second Duke's reign, are but a small sample of the myriad topics found within the Athol papers, and are brought alive by the theatre group Labyrinth, who do so in their own unique way. The upcoming play explores a fascinating, though rather unsavoury aspect of past Irish culture, marriage abduction. Prevalent since the medieval period, but reaching its peak during the 1700s and early 1800s, this practice involved a gang of men kidnapping a young heiress, usually aged between 12 and 16, who would subsequently be forced to marry one of her captors, all in the pursuit of claiming her inherited wealth. But there were also collusive abductions, when a girl or a young woman would willingly allow herself to be taken by a man of her choice, in favour of a suitor her family were trying to force her to wed. In the Athol papers, we have an example of a collusive abduction. In the autumn of 1749, a 13-year-old Irish heiress, called Carolina, fled to the Isle of Man with William Corey and his family. Carolina and William would be pursued by her stepfather, who sought to have Carolina married off to his brother, so that her wealth would remain in the family. When Carolina foiled her stepfather's plans, he had her and the Corey family imprisoned at Castle Russian in February 1750, where they were left to rot until finally released by the Manx authorities in early 1751. All us crushed into this tiny cell, we've but the one bucket in the corner between us all. Would you move over? You're crushing me double it. Ha! That's not all he's crushing. Oh, I wonder what dinner will be tonight. Gruel, gruel, or watered down gruel. Oh! <coughs> Would you mind? There's ladies present. Dear me, how did it come to this? Well, a well-born lady. <laughs> <laughs> I said, me, a well-born lady, hold up in this godforsaken hell pit with a bunch of renegades and chances. And sure, I've done nothing. Nothing, that is, except look out for my boy and his sweet wife. Yeah, sweet my eye. Turns out, Carolina, that you are nothing but trouble. And after's all I did for you, saving you from a fate worse than death. Oh no, this is not the thanks I expected. This is not what I bought into. Nothing but bread, water and gruel to eat. Mm, bread and water, yum. I'm sick of it, and it's freezing. What date is it now? Easter, 1751. Easter, 1751? Geez, we've only been and been in this cesspit for nearly two, I said, two years. What have you got to say for yourself, eh, Carolina? I just wanted to marry someone who didn't want control of all me money. Where did this all start? <sighs> Carolina, I need to speak with you. What is it, stepfather? Well now, you're in luck because I found you a suitor. He's a fine man, and what's more, you even know him. He's familiar to you. 
It'll be no problem. It'll be grand. He's known you since you were knee-high to a leprechaun. I don't want to marry me uncle. Jeez, now. How did you know I was going to suggest your uncle? Ah, now you know he's not your real uncle, don't you? And I'm only 13, father, and he's 58. Don't you be thinking that I don't know what all this is about. You've already helped yourself to £1,700 of my fortune and now you want to sacrifice me to your ancient wizened brother Charles to rub off scores. Ah, William, you'll never guess. He only says I've got to go and marry me uncle. Seems a bit wrong. Oh, sure. That's terrible. Ah, well, never mind. Maybe you have a nice time after all. He's a fine fellow, I've heard. Fine fellow? Fine fellow. He's an old fellow, I tell you. And I don't love him. I don't even like him. Sure, he makes my skin crawl. Ah, well. I'll miss you. How much? How much will you miss me? I mean, maybe you don't have to miss me at all. Huh? Oh, think about it, Willie. We've always got on, you and I. Maybe you could whisk me away and marry me yourself. It'd be an idea. Huh? Oh, think about it, Willie. Marriage abductions. Oh, it's not unusual. It's all the rage, in fact. Don't you remember at the Dougals last week when all those men came in and abducted the women? It's all the craze at the moment. Abducted at first sight. For sure, the odd woman occasionally gets a bit killed. But these things happen and overall, these marriage abductions work. I need to ask me mother. Mum, mum. Sure, what is it, William? I'm busy. I'm going to marry Carolina. You what? You're going to marry who? Well, whose idea was that, anyway? Well, it was sort of hers, Mum. Hers? Well, that doesn't surprise me, William. For the Lord's sake, the girl's nothing but a strumpet. What would you want to marry her for? Well, she's got to marry Charles. Charles? Her uncle Charles? Why would she be having to marry Charles? It's something to do with her... her... Her what? Her... you know, her... her what not? What she got from her da? Her moles? Nah, her... Her bad breath? No, nah, her... Her buck teeth? Nah, her... in summon. Her incontinence? Inheritance! That's it. Her inheritance. Money? Ah, you know, William, she's a fine girl after all. Haven't I always said it? And beautiful and clever. So clever, William, to have come up with this plan. I mean, to have fallen in love with you. But you do really love me, don't you, William? William, ah... Absolutely sick with excitement. Oh, it's like a holiday, so it is. Oh, yes, we had high hopes. Sure we did. And in fairness, it was a great month we had in the Isle of Man. A month, that is, before that John Campbell had us locked up for abducting Carolina. Abducting my eye, scheming little minx. (sighs) But at least when we get out, we've got all that lovely money to spend. At least, Carolina, you didn't have to marry a man who controlled all your money. (sighs) Captain Dow and the Dutch Dogger. The upcoming play revolves around the Isle of Man's role as a major hub in the British Isle smuggling trade which flourished from the end of the 17th century to the revestment of 1765. This activity inevitably led to conflict between the Manx authorities and the customs and revenue officials of Britain and Ireland, the former of whom did not regard the trade conducted to and from the Isle as smuggling. British and Irish revenue ships would occasionally seize cargo, money and even vessels around the island, even though technically the King's customs officials held no authority in Manx waters, which led to a number of these officers being taken into custody by the Manx authorities and imprisoned at Castle Russian, their seizures regarded as acts of piracy. One such event 
happened in the summer of 1750, when crew members of the revenue cruiser Sincerity were taken into custody after seizing money from an Irish vessel in Douglas Bay, and then later that same day attempted to capture a Dutch vessel in Ramsey Bay. This would eventually lead to a violent confrontation between the commander of the Sincerity, Captain George Dow, and the Manx officials over the imprisonment of his crew. Do you think Christian really will go to Carlisle? Christian? To Carlisle? Which Christian? Why would he be going to Carlisle? Captain Matthias Christian. You know, the commander of the fort in Ramsey. Oh yes, him. Why does he want to go to Carlisle? He doesn't want to go to Carlisle. He signed a £500 bond to agree to appear at the Carlisle Assizes. That was under duress. That Captain Dow had a gun to his head and a cannon pointed at his house. Threatened to blow it to smithereens and blow his brains out if he didn't sign. Well, he had his reasons and his son was in prison. Dow had no authority. You've lost me. What do you mean? Captain Dow, the captain of a British revenue cruiser, the Sincerity, thinks he can throw his weight around Manx waters, but he's no legal right to. He's only trying to put a stop to the smuggling. Yes, but that's up to the Duke of Athol, Lord of Man. He's the only one who can impose levies on goods in our waters, not the British. Do you remember a couple of months ago, back in June, all that business with the Dutch dogger? Well, it actually started when Dow boarded that Irish wherry. He searched the passengers and confiscated 25 guineas from our Hugh Reed. Confiscated? Stole more like. Didn't just search them either. They were stripped and the slow ones beaten. That's outrageous. They were stripped? Well, he must have had reason to think they were smuggling. He'd had the tip-off from the customs official that the Dutch dogger the Hope had contraband. Then, seeing that Irish boat sneaking into Douglas Harbour, well... Well, the dogger avoided him in Douglas, set off to Ramsey when it saw all that palaver happening in the bay. What palaver? Disgusting it was. Before Dow and his men could get to the Hope, Captain Brideson, you know, commander of the Douglas Fort, he appeared at the head of a mob, attacked the Sincerity and the customs officer, Peter Sidebottom. You're talking nonsense. I know Brideson, upright manxman. He was merely trying to serve a petition from Hugh Reed for the 25 guineas that were stolen from him, oh, along with a reference from the deputy governor. But Dow refused to receive them and locked himself in his cabin. Then, to cap it all, his son actually threw Brideson off the quarter deck. <laughs> lucky he wasn't killed. Even luckier no one was killed when Dow fired shots into the crowd before casting off. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but that wasn't even the end of it. Next thing, it all kicked off in Ramsey. Ramsey? The Hope had sailed to Ramsey, grounded itself trying to keep Dow and the Sincerity away. Then, when the tide was high enough, Dow sent his son and ten other men in a small boat to seize it and its cargo. Which he had no right to do. But when they got on the Hope, they were met by Captain Christian. Ah, so that's where he comes into it. Along with boatloads of men from Ramsey and 40 Douglas men who had hidden on board the Hope. <laughs> like that happened. If you let me finish... All these men beat up Dow's son and the other crew. They took them ashore and they threw them into a dungeon. The Ramsey folk took the Hope's contraband and they hid it away. Fake news. There were only six men with Christian. He had a good reason to go aboard. He was only trying to see justice done, get back Hugh Reed's 25 guineas. Their muskets were old and they weren't even loaded. There was no violence, there was no dungeon. Dow's son and the crew were taken to one of the best pubs, given a comfortable room with a good fire and even given bowls of punch. The boats going back and forth were just curious Ramsey folk who wanted to know what was going on, that's all. But where does Carlisle come into it? We're getting to that. Well, regardless of whether it was a fine pub or a dungeon initially, they were taken to Castletown, where six of the crew were released at the start of July because the sincerity was so undermanned. Well, that was decent of them. 
The others were to appear at a hearing about the theft from Hugh Reed. Dow could have put a stop to it then by appearing and showing proof he had the right to take the actions he did, which of course he didn't. He said he wasn't answerable to Manx authorities. The cheek. Next thing, rumours began that Dow was planning a rescue. So Dow's son and four others ended up in Castle Russian. Aye, that Dow had already broken one of his crew out of prison the year before. No, but I still don't get where Carlisle comes into it. Well, now Dow invited Captain Christian onto his boat for a meal to discuss everything. Which, of course, he had the sense to refuse. Yes, but he did end up going aboard the sincerity. He hoped to resolve all these issues. He was given a glass of wine. I and... bet it was more like vinegar. Anyway, the next thing, Dow has his pistol pointed at Christian's head and spent the next three hours threatening to blow up his house with the cannon fire, put him in irons, throw him in the coal hole and take him to Carlisle to be hanged. He only let Christian go when he agreed to pay the £500 bond and appear at the next assizes in Carlisle. That's not right. If I was Christian, I wouldn't go. No, and neither he should. We'll see. The Jacobite Rising of 1745 The Isle of Man was not isolated from the political intrigues and conflicts found in the rest of the British Isles, and the upcoming play revolves around the Jacobite Rising of 1745, when supporters of the House of Stuart raised a rebellion in Scotland with the intent of removing George II of the House of Hanover from the British throne. The Athos, like many Scottish families, were divided by loyalty in this period. While members of his family sided with the Stuarts, the second Duke of Athol remained loyal to the Hanoverians and was under constant pressure to demonstrate his support for George II. This meant that his Manx officials had to do the same, and upon news of the revolt, the Isle of Man was placed on a war footing by the governor who raised the militia and station guards at the island's various landing spots. Throughout the Rising, which lasted from August 1745 to April 1746, the Manx were gripped by fears that the Jacobites would invade or use the isle as a refuge. Nice day today. Aye, it's fine enough. More my ladies. Any chance of a bite to ease? I went to the kitchen door, but no one was about. I step out for a moment and the whole house goes to pot. It's been like this since the master met with Governor Lindsay. Everyone running around chasing their tails. Why? Well, according to the skeet, them Jacobites have landed up in Scotland. So what has that got to do with us? Governor Lindsay thinks he'll invade the island. You'd think we were going to be murdered in our beds. Oh, surely not. Well, I have to be off. I've got errands to run. Aye, no time to stand around gossiping. Come on, you, and have a nice bit of broth in the pan and a bit of bonnock. Right, Good day to you, Fenella. I see you're loaded up with shopping. Don't you usually have it delivered? There's no one to deliver it. It's Governor Lindsay's fault. He's raised the militia, and all the men and lads have been called away to train today. I just hope no one gets shot. It's very worrying. Do you think the Jacobites will invade? No. Raising the militia is just the Duke's way of making sure the King knows where the Duke's loyalties lies. There's Dewin. Dewin! Dewin! Where am I, ladies? I didn't expect to see you back so soon. Just finished. I learned how to shoot a gun. They let us fire shot. I soon got the hang of it. Just need to work out how to hit the target. Then it's sorted. No one got shot then? A couple near misses. And a couple of lads fell over when marching. I blamed the beer. Dewin, can you carry these to the kitchen for me? I need to be getting back. Good day to you, Fenella. Fast am I, Fen. Surprised to see you out so early in the evening. I'm waiting for Tom and James. We're going to keep watch on the beach tonight. All night? Yeah, we, we'll take different watches, so hopefully I'll get some sleep. And what will you do if any Jacobites land? No idea. I think we're supposed to shoot them, but I might just run like hell. <laughs> it comes to something when you have to spend your night out on the beach. Evening to you, Fenella. You're looking anxious. Granny's rent is due today, and Uncle Joe isn't back from fishing yet. They're saying the moors are getting hard if you default, and Granny's scared she'll get evicted. Nah, stop your fretting. Mr Kiswick know how things stand, and they'll get the rent. 
They're saying the Duke is desperate for money. Never known when them lot where they weren't desperate for money. They're living in London now and emptying the island's coffers in the process. Governor Lindsay's looking for somewhere for them to live over here. He hasn't found anywhere yet, then. Oh, Peel Castle's empty. So as I'm hearing. Thankfully, the Isle of Man was largely untouched by the revolt, and upon news of the Jacobites' defeat at the Battle of Culloden, the Manx celebrated with three days and nights of music, bonfires, and copious amounts of drink. Morning to you, Tilly. Bit of a breeze today. Aye, good blanket day. You not working then? I am. Cook sent me out with a note for the butcher. Surprised you didn't go yourself. Cook was out celebrating yesterday and is not feeling well. It was a great night. I heard it descended into a riot. I didn't see any rioting. There was a huge bonfire and there was music and dancing. And old Harry and his sons were playing up a storm on the fiddles. And drinking. Let's not forget the drinking. Well, yes, some were drinking. You weren't then. No, I didn't go. It's rare to get time off, so when I do, I enjoy a rest. Most of the staff were celebrated. Haven't seen Dewan for days. I think that's Dewan. Where? Just at the corner, leaning on Mrs Quine's house. Uh, it is. And still drunk by the looks of him. I'd better fetch him back. I'll come and give a hand. Dewan, look at the state you're in. Oh, I, I need to have a rest. It, it's been a long walk from Douglas. Douglas? How did you end up in Douglas? Oh, I'm not sure. James said the party was bigger and better in Douglas. Well, was it? Was it what? Bigger and better. Uh, it was bigger, but not better. There were bonfires and music, but it got really rowdy and some men took up torches and ran through the streets throwing stones at the Catholic houses, breaking the windows. Good heavens, why did they do that? I've no idea. Well, i best be off. Do you need a hand getting him back? No, I'll be fine. Come on with you, Dewan. How are you doing, sister? Did you get my last letter all right? Yes, Captain Karen sent a lad with it. You should have let me know you were coming. I didn't know myself till yesterday. Captain Karen was important coming this way, so here I am. Anything exciting happening, Ramsay? Well... Just the other day, two men were arrested as suspected Jacobites. Oh, do tell, sister. They were in Ramsey and they were acting suspiciously. Everybody in Ramsey acts suspiciously. Yes, well, they had also been acting suspiciously in Douglas. When questioned, they claimed to be Chapman who had goods to sell. And how do you know all this? I have my contacts. Well, were they all arrested as Jacobites? No, the governor believed them, but he wanted evidence. They were forbidden to leave until they could provide proof. So are they still here then? No, they provided proof. It was signed by no other than Sir William Maxwell of Springhill. So were they Jacobites or not then? Apparently not, but it is interesting that I had not made their acquaintance. Ramsey is not that big a town and I know all my fellow merchants. Tell me how your Charlotte's doing in the band, then. You have been listening to the Apple Papers radio plays, which we hope you have enjoyed. These stories have been taken from the papers of the Dukes of Athol, which are currently being catalogued at the Manx Museum, a two-year project funded by the trustees of the charity Manx National Heritage. If you would like to learn more about the Dukes of Athol and Manx history between 1736 and 1830, please visit the website imuseum.im, where you will find blog posts on the Athol papers and catalogue records for the papers of the second and third dukes. If you would like to learn more about Manx National Heritage and how you can support its work, please visit our website www.manxnationalheritage.im or join us on Facebook. Thank you.